Okay, so um, when when performing a um, your your body waxing procedure, uh, obviously you've made sure that your client's health, uh, skin is healthy. The intake form has been filled out. The release form has been filled out. Uh, you have trimmed away excess hair. Uh, hair should be about uh, a half inch in length. Uh, and when uh, once you begin the procedure, uh, you're going to make sure that you're wearing your your gloves. So we'll be wearing gloves for the procedure. I am, um, because we're home and uh, I don't have a live client, I will be uh, demoing it on my, my own left arm here. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you can see how hairy my arm is. Can, is it pretty, you can see a little bit of hair, right? None, none. What about, what about here at an angle? Can you see that? A little bit? Not, not really. Ever so slightly. Let's, all right. Well, let's see if I, if I, what about if I turn the light off? Can you see it better? A little bit, barely. All right. I used to think I was a very, very hairy person and now I'm like feeling like maybe not so much. Okay. So, um, the, the different, uh, products you'll be dealing with. So you have your cleanser. Uh, the cleanser will be, uh, what you use to clean the skin. Uh, you'll be using a cotton swab or a cotton pad and you'll be cleansing, uh, the area. After you uh, have cleansed and dried the area, you would be applying your wax. After you apply your wax and you remove uh, the wax with your muslin strip, uh, once the area is fully cleared, uh, you obviously you want to check if you have to tweeze before uh, you would remove, but uh, you would use your uh, wax remover to get any wax residue that's left behind off of the skin. After, uh, after the waxing procedure. And once the uh, wax has been fully removed from the skin, uh, you will be you know, wiping off the excess product and you will be applying um, some cooling aloe vera soothing gel. So there's the soothing gel that you would use uh, right afterwards. Uh, this, is, this is to, um, to any sort of inflammation or irritation that the skin may, uh, may have felt uh, from the abrupt waxing, this will help soothe that. And your um, last two products would be either to apply like a slow growth, a slow growth formulation. This one's by uh, Gigi and it's called Slow Grow. And uh, you apply the slow grow after you've uh, applied the aloe vera. And this product is supposed to make it so the grow back of your hair uh, grows back slower than it would naturally. So um, that product would be applied. And then your final product uh, would be your moisturizer. So the, your moisturizer uh, to make sure that the, the, the skin is uh, hydrated and it stays hydrated because when you wax, um, it does take away several layers of skin and it could uh, leave, leave the skin feeling dry if not moisturized properly. Okay, so with that being said, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, test, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cleanse my area and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, test my wax uh, heat thresholds. So let me get my cotton pads. All right. Gonna pull out a couple of cotton pads for the service. If you have a closed cotton container, you would wanna close your container when you're, when you're finished. So as to not leave cotton exposed to open air. 
you'll be cleansing the area with the cleanser and you'll make sure the area is nice and clean When it comes to um, waxing procedures, you want to make sure that the area is indeed dry. Uh, you may um, use a, a TPT or a warm towel. You can use another uh, cotton pad to uh, absorb excess moisture. Uh, in your milady's uh, textbook, it may suggest for you to uh, use a little bit of talc powder. Uh, in this case, with this product line, it, in the manufacturer's directions, it doesn't require talc. So I won't be using it uh, in, with this product. So I've cleansed my air, uh, the, the area. I made sure the area is dry. I'm going to go ahead and test my product uh, and make sure that my product is not indeed too hot. Remember that you're always using a brand new wood stick every time uh, you're dipping into your product. This includes the wood stick you use for the test. You use it, you test it, and then you just throw it away. So let me get my wax. So, I'm making sure that the wax isn't too hot, so I'm just dipping a little bit, and I'm controlling my product by spinning my stick. It's highly likely that you're going to spin your stick a lot, so you don't get drippage and you control it, and you just kind of apply in a little small area to make sure that the client uh, is comfortable, and they'll say, yes, I am comfortable, that's good. You can throw your, you can throw the uh, stick away. And you can just like lift, you can lift it up and it'll come right off. All right, so with that being said, let me get my other waxing sticks. There's different sizes of waxing sticks. You can have small waxing sticks uh, that are usually used uh, that, that look, uh, they look like uh, coffee mixers, you know, those small waxing sticks. Those can be used for your eyebrows, under eye area, for your lip area. Um, you have your, um, your popsicle stick size. The popsicle sticks also can be used, uh, for the center of the eyebrows. Uh, the popsicle sticks for smaller areas, uh, you can use the popsicle stick for the underarm area. Parts of the face, like the cheeks, sideburns. Uh, and then you have uh, your larger, your larger like tongue depressors. So like these big, these, these wood sticks are the larger ones. Alrighty. So uh, when you're, when you're uh, using your different waxes, you wanna make sure you check with your manufacturer's directions because each, um, each wax might have a different procedure. The difference between using uh, like a honey-based wax versus a hard wax are, are completely different. With a honey-based wax, uh, you'll be using strips, and a hard wax, you'll be laying it on thickly uh, and peeling it without the wax strips. Yes, Elf, you had a question? Yes, my question was about the soothing aloe product that you Okay, so um, I'm using my tongue depressor single use. If you're someone who is trying to preserve the usage of your sticks, you are totally entitled to break them in half and use each end. Um, of course, if you're getting into the deeper ends of your wax, that might be a little bit harder to control. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my, uh, my tongue depressor and I'm going to lay down my wax on my arm when, um, when it comes to the honey wax, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the wax in the direction in which the hair grows. 
and then I'm gonna tear the muslin strip in the opposite direction in which it grows. So here you can see I'm controlling my product and I am applying my product in the direction in which the hair grows. Throwing my stick away, applying my muslin strip, and I'm pushing it in the direction in which the hair grows. Obviously, I'm not able to hold my skin taut, but you would want to hold your skin of your client taut so as to uh, pull the hair off. And when you pull the hair in the opposite direction in which it grows, you'll be able to see the hair sitting in the wax. I know I'm not very hairy. There we go. You can kind of see it. All right. Now, I know, I know, I know. I used to have very hairy arms. I promise you, it's all the years of waxing. <laughs> like, I've been waxing since my arms. Like, straight up, I've been waxing my full arms since I was 13. So, um, yeah. Uh, I, I actually, my brows too, uh, I have a very pronounced eyebrow, uh, very much like Frida Kahlo, and I've been waxing the center on my eyebrows uh, since the age of 13. So, okay. So here I am, and I'm, I'm going in, and I'm uh, making sure that all the uh, hair on my forearm has been taken off. Notice how I'm lifting up the wax, and I'm taking the excess wax off by kind of like pushing it against the ledge here so I don't have an excess of wax. I'm also making sure that the drippage is being controlled. See, and at the same time, I'm able to twist and make sure there's no drippage so um, my area stays clean. I'm making sure that I'm not overlapping any of the area that's already been waxed. This is important. You're not able to wax the same area twice, okay? So I'm laying down my muslin strip, and again, I'm going with the direction of my hair growth. I'm using the heat of my hand to warm the muslin strip onto the product, and I am removing, and uh, I was able to use the same muslin strip you can even um, fold the muslin strip and then you still have this part available. So you're able to do another rip with your muslin strip. Let's see here. Again, making sure I'm not double dipping my applicators. So I'm snapping my applicators in half. Again, making sure I'm controlling my product, taking the excess off, and applying in which the direction of my hair grows. Now, with the, um, with the honey wax, the one I'm using right now, uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't really harden very easily, so you have a lot of working time where you can apply it onto someone's uh, arms and uh, and set it, and you uh, are able to relatively uh, leave it on there, and it won't harden on the arm, and it won't be much of an issue at all, and that's fine. However, if you're dealing with much deeper rooted hair. Um, or a, uh, a hard wax, the amount of time that the wax sits on the skin is, uh, is, it does matter. It does matter a lot more when you're dealing with hard wax. Hard wax can harden to the point of breaking, so it won't be pliable anymore. So you have to make sure you catch the hard wax at the correct timing so it's not so pliable that it's sticky, but it's not so hardened that it just snaps. So luckily you don't have to worry about that with uh, the uh, honey-based waxes. All right, so I have, um, actually I have uh, smoothed my forearm. 
I'm gonna get the, the uh, lower part of my wrist here. This is the last little part. And then I'll be able to move on to the next product in the product line. Again, making sure that my wax is controlled and not dripping. Applying in the direction in which the hair grows. I had a question about the direction. Um, so with sugaring, I've heard that you apply the sugar wax the opposite way. So it's reverse. So like with waxing, you say you apply it along hair growth and then remove it against, but with sugaring, you apply against and remove along. It depends on the manufacturer's directions, Elf. Okay. So like for instance, a hard a hard wax will have you uh, do it in both directions. It'll have you go uh, against the grain and then with, or oh, okay. yeah, so like a hard wax will have you go back and forth and it has you lay the wax on. I understand, I haven't personally sugared uh, before, but I have seen that the product in sugaring is a lot more viscous and thicker uh, yeah. than this product. See how this right. product has free flow? Right. Uh, yeah. The sugaring one is like, um, it's basically almost the same texture as a hard wax where yeah. you don't have to use the muslin strip to rip it off. Okay. And, um, and in that case, it would have the, a similar procedure where you go with the grain and against the grain and then rip off. Okay. That, that um, makes me want to ask, I've often had waxing procedures where they absolutely went over an area more than one time, and it sounds like with the hard wax, is that more acceptable? Because it sounds like they go both directions. Can they do it more than that? I, I would say that no, it's not acceptable to overlap a waxing procedure over itself. If they missed hair, uh, they should be going in with tweezers. The reason being is because um, no matter how gentle the wax may be, inevitably you are ripping away several layers of dead skin. So um, you, if you go over the same waxing area, you do run the risk of uh, taking away too many layers, exposing life skin, uh, creating uh, inflammation or irritation. Uh, so it is definitely not advisable to go over the same areas over and over again. Okay. So, um, with that being said, I mean, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, Indra, people do do it. People do do it. Um, just like we tell people in the salon that certain things we don't do and then they go in and do it anyways. Uh, they do. It, and, and I would say that from my own personal experience, when I've been waxed double, I haven't had negative repercussions, but I'm not a sensitive skin client and I'm not on any medications. So, okay. So my next uh, product is my, um, my wax residue remover oil. I'm putting, placing it on my cotton pad and I'm going over the area um, and you don't have to even go over the whole area. You just have to Look at the area and see if there's any wax residue left behind. And then you would go in and you would rub in those areas. And uh, this product, this uh, wax, this wax residue remover, uh, basically dissolves the wax. So we've dissolved the wax. And I've used my cotton swab to remove the excess build up product all right so i'm going to go ahead and add my satin smooth aloe vera uh, uh soothing gel uh you may apply this uh with your with your hands you don't have to use a cotton swab. You may just apply over with your hands. That's totally fine. And it'll absorb pretty quickly into the arm. Well, into the part of the body that you're working on. At this point, I, if you're, if for your client, uh, you could use your slow grow formulation and you may, um, 
Again, you may apply it to a cotton swab or a cotton pad. And the slow grow, again, is exactly what it is intended for. It's, it's intended for your skin to absorb it. So the regrowth time uh, of your hair slows and you don't get regrowth right away. It's uh, the slow grow formulation is also intended uh, to prevent ingrown hairs. And uh, when you're applying this, you can also apply with your, your hands or a cotton swab. Make sure it's all the way, uh, all the way absorbed into your client's skin. And finally, uh, your moisturizer product. When it comes to the moisturizer, you can use your, uh, your facial and uh, manicuring manipulations. So you can go in and you can give them a little bit of an arm massage so the product gets absorbed in. Remember, you did indeed wax someone, so you don't want to agitate the skin too much. You want to just make sure that the product is uh, all the way, all the way absorbed into the client's skin. And you can see, let's see if there's a difference. Okay. Maybe see, maybe if I turn off this light. No. Gosh, the zoom is not great, but, but can you see? How one is like shinier and smooth and the other one's like kind of matted. That's the difference between having a smooth arm and not. One arm is super shiny, sleek, and you can tell is well hydrated. And the other one looks like um, maybe the skin tone's not as even. It's not as bright, right? It looks like I got a little bit of shading going on. Does one arm also look kind of red? I can't. I'm not sure if it's my eyes. Does it look red? Let's see. You tell me. At first, so slightly. Yeah. I can tell, like, one definitely has had, like, something done to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's common. It's a, it's a wax procedure, so. And depending on how deeply rooted your client's hair is, too, uh, you might see more, more irritation or not. All right. You know, some people 